No, say Draven. Say Bye. Say Draven. Welcome to the League of Draven. <laughs> Wait, oh my Wait. god. Are, are, are you the voice? Are you the voice? <laughs> what the hell? Wait. <laughs>Welcome to another episode of The Clinic. This is your one-stop shop for all things MSI. And we're going to be talking about fire plays, predictions, dank memes, and everything in between. I'm Avalie May, hosting the show. And today we have our two guests joining us, as always, Captain Flowers and Perks. But we also have a very, very special guest joining us, and it's Cadrill. And Cadrill, may I just point out the fact that you probably have the most aesthetically pleasing backdrop out of all of us. Yeah, yeah. it looks it looks really good. It looks you're, really you're good. definitely vibing. It's professional. Definitely yeah. vibing. I mean, look at my nose. British boy goes out in a Berlin summer for one day. It's already burned, so I need to make sure the blinds are closed all day. Speaking of noses, it's a horror. I literally just had my nose like broken and fixed, so I'm gonna sound drainy for the entire show. But that's a okay because I watched all of the Evil Genius games on pain meds. But we're gonna get into that later, uh, guys. Let's start talking about MSI so far, uh, the games that we've seen and everything moving into the Rumble stage. So Flowers, let's start with you. How you feeling about MSI so far, buddy? Well, I mean, I'm. Let's let's not talk about Group C. Let's just not talk about that group. Let's talk about the other ones where everything went according to plan and T1 won all their games. RNG won all their games. No surprises there, honestly. I think pretty much everyone was expecting T1 and RNG to just kind of stomp those groups. And I'm really excited to see, like, it's kind of nuts to me that all three groups, the number one team, just went perfect run, right? Yeah. G2, RNG, T1, all perfect run. Somebody's got to finally start getting some losses now once these guys are Yeah, going it's, a great, it's a great format, right? It, it, like, it hypes up the, the decent teams to look <laughs> even more insane before they actually face off each other. <laughs> now the first seeds are going to look like the first seed games against each other are going to be more hype, I agree. Yeah, yeah it's true, yeah. I mean, it, it is true, yeah. I mean, do I was actually surprised. I think the biggest surprise was G2 didn't drop a single game. I thought RNG and T1 would probably go undefeated, but I actually thought EG yeah. might take a game that's, in the best of one of like four games. That's, my that's our fault. I don't that's that's our fault. We we definitely should have won at least one of those, I feel like. But I mean, you know, Some looking back, look at the Cap Silas game, dude. All I'm saying is it's a good thing JoJo comes from Fortnite because at least he's used to getting danced on like that. Like, goddamn, <laughs> I love our teams. But that was hard to watch. I, I had my I had my cursor over the X in the top right corner of the screen the whole time. I was I was hanging on for dear life just watching through to the end. I knew what it was gonna be. But... All right, wait, wait. Let me, I mean, let me jump of, in. Most of the games are quite mid gap, though, no? There was there was mid gap, <laughs> but let me jump in for a second because Flowers is already bringing up points for our next segment that I want to jump into, and that oh, of course <laughs> that of course is replay because we've already seen so many amazing games and not only plays but also amazing moments uh, throughout Twitter, social reddit everything and i want everyone right now to share their top favorite moment whether it's a play whether it's a social media post or anything uh, i'll actually go first before i throw it to you guys because flowers you're bringing it up i was not expecting to see just on my twitter feed as i you know i'm scrolling through in the morning carlos and then whoever was next to him do uh dancing like the Fortnite dance just like tagging evil geniuses in it and i was just crying laughing <laughs> with just like the Fortnite music in the background and i'm like and hey we can do it right right and that was day one so that was my absolute favorite moment uh Kedro, what what was yours Definitely the caps, uh, like 1v3 in bot, I don't know, like, it looked so doomed when he popped stopwatch and he was on 1% HP, I thought he was for sure dead, and then yeah. the fact that he actually made that play work out. I don't know what what caps, is, uh, what's happened to caps, like, it's everyone the capital P, was like, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, ch it's the name change of the capital P, I don't know yeah. what it is, but last year he was, He's I don't want to say P. underwhelming, but this split was kind of like the, is he really going to be s subpar for like two years in a row in a way, because... There was some mid lane ranking I think Niski did on the show during spring split and Caps was like fourth or fifth place. Um, there was like Humanoid, VTO, Larson all ahead of him, things like this. So I don't know, it's it's such a blessing to have a player like Caps in your region who just goes to international events and does things like that. Um, Dude, hell yeah. Really yeah. Like, as soon as I saw, like, he's in the stopwatch, he's at 1% HP. It looks like, okay, all that's left, just tap him once as soon as he's out and it's done. But as soon as I saw him walking away from that golden statue, I knew the turned into a tombstone i i knew that somehow some way it was going to get outplayed that was it was sick though like it was sick flowers do you want to say your moment next 
All right, so I'll give a uh, I got I'll give a shout out over to the over to the LPL, a team uh, fight machine. MSI 2021, it was RNG versus Damwon. I think the finals game three where he was playing Kaisa and they were like sieging a bot tier two. And Gala just literally ults into five people on top of everyone, kills someone, dies in his GA and wins him the fight when his team comes for the backup. So like this guy is a real chat in team fights as well. Hmm. Dude, LPL Kaisa is built different. It's built different. Uh, Perks, what about you? Favorite moment? I mean, honestly, uh, it is uh, it is hard to choose from like all the... I would la I want to choose like a Cavs play because like Rasmus has been really smurfing. Uh, he's like really like ramped up. Um, yeah, he may be playing against like Jojo and OC, uh, but I think he's been playing really, really well. So uh, I like this Yasuo play. You know, I'm a kind of um, Yasuo connoisseur myself. So I, I did like I did like his Yasuo game and he's a solo kill as well. Uh, and I mean, I guess just not to take the same player, I would take the Zeus Mummy too. I think it was it was pretty cool. He also dodged the Gwen Q there, and I mean he just kind of smacked them really hard. Like he didn't really expect it, right? Um, I mean Jax kind of does those things. This champ is like can be really obnoxious. Uh, um, so yeah, that one was pretty cool. No. Uh, a, lot, a lot of great plays. Uh, this uh, this this stage. Yeah. yeah, and I know that there were. I know. G2 looks fantastic, and on the NA and LCS side, we have, you know, JoJo tweets that are aging not the best, but that being I, said... I don't care. I love that he's talking his That's exactly I what I was going to say. him talk his and get hit, then sit there quietly like I it's like a it too. Exactly, I like it too. exactly. I want them to keep just trash talking because that really brings in the energy and brings in the potential for a super hype moment. Like if they did take the first game um, off of G2, that would have been incredible, right? And it would have, they, they could have lost every single game after it, but it still would have built up that hype for LCS fans. So I, I don't care if half of the tweets age poorly or even 90% of the tweets age poorly. I still want the chance for those 10% pop ups. Well, yeah, I mean, you can have some coping in like the, some of the games were close, right? And they, yeah, they were yeah. like, they were like three games one were pretty close, throw, right? Like right? three games yeah, were like... pretty close. Like it, it, it wasn't like a complete like, uh, like it's like EG never had a chance because they actually had a chance like in every game. So mm -hmm. it's, it's it, like, you can have a, you can have your, how do you say, your grace in that, you know, at least, at least the games are winnable. <laughs> <laughs> just a quick hop. I also think. Just... <laughs> but I, I also think the games weren't that important either, because I mean they were probably expected to make it out anyway. So mm -hmm. going into like the second stage of group stage, if he does do his shit talk again and he wins like his first best of one against like RNG or someone or G two the next time around, then it, it just delivers even more hype because now he's going to talk after yeah, the game as well. I, 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 yeah, I wouldn't like I wouldn't like double down. I would like quad quadruple. Yeah, definitely quadruple <laughs> down. You know, like go talk again. You know, like at 100%. some point you're bound to win. You're, you're bound oh, to yeah. win at some point, right? Like, oh, yeah. and then you're like, yeah. Look, I am. Me and Avli, we are all too familiar with how quickly things at MSI get erased. Like, let's remember the Team Liquid that beat the then world champions and then had an unfortunate walk into uh, to G2 in the finals right after. Yeah, perks. Nobody remembers yeah, that perks. IG series. Nobody remembers that one. Yeah. So all they got to do is just show up, show up in the next stage. That's all we got to do. I feel like I'm new to the podcast, but there's probably tension between the, the G2 win and the, the NA, like... Kedra, listen. <laughs> support. Kedra, listen. It, it's, just, it's just one of those things that you can't scrub you out of your brain. It's a, it's a very sore spot. It's <laughs> It was the closest that the LCS has, like, ever... It, 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 it's felt like the closest LCS ever got. And uh, Perks just didn't want us to have it. It was the closest LCS ever got, and we were the base drop on somebody else's Wub Wub highlight reel. Yep. They, they won an IM. What? Oh, World Bro. <laughs> we have, what? What even is that? Uh, we we can't go that far back that? the time machine. Those don't count anymore. The we can't there count are, those There anymore. are League of Legends Zoomers don't who don't know they what don't I am, IPL. They don't know what any of that is. Oh, yeah. Cry. <laughs> well, now that we've gotten Wait. that out of the way, why don't we jump into <laughs> okay. some clippable content? And you know what that means? It's time for your hot picks. So since groups are now over and everyone's gotten a chance to show what they're made of on an international level, uh, who do you guys have for making it to the top four of the tournament? Uh, Kadrel, let's start with you. I think, so the first uh, group stage, I think went pretty much expected with the, the three teams qualifying in first place. Mm -hmm. uh, I think any everyone's guess for top four is always going to be G2, uh, RNG, T1. It's just the fourth spot, which I guess is up for debate. 
Uh, I think the strongest one in theory would probably be EG. Mm-hmm. Um, but PSG, I mean, Vietnam and, and PSG in general, just teams that are known for upsetting at uh, international ju- events. Mm, I think the safe bet is EG, so I would say EG. It's a good choice. It's a good choice, Cadrell. Uh Flowers, do you concur? <laughs> I mean, I'm 100% going EG. I'm just, I'm an NA fan at every event that NA plays at. I'm not voting against NA. Like, I literally int my pickums at Worlds every single year to put NA getting out of groups, and then we don't do it. Like, it's just part of being an NA fan. You never drop the faith. Mm-hmm. I do think T1's a pretty solid favorite to get first, so I'm expecting it'll be, like, wh- whoever gets out, out of EG, out of PSG, out of Buffalo, I think that they're probably staring down the barrel of a best of five against T1 in knockout stage. And then we'll probably get like a G2 RNG best of five on the other side, mm-hmm. which is pretty hype. But yeah, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with EG for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I, I can predict the whole, the whole tournament right now. It's not that hard. Right, what do you got? Okay. All right. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, so T1 is first. This is like groups, right? Mm-hmm. T1 is first, RNG second, G2 is third, EG is fourth. Uh, fifth is um, Vietnam, um, and then the f- of course it's gonna be G two RNG right, where G two will beat RNG in a best of five because okay. that's that's just how it goes right. Tradition. Okay. Uh, okay. yeah, as, as as the history speaks, and then uh, T one will beat the like whoever makes I guess E G right. I mean mm-hmm. obviously right, <laughs> they will beat them, and then and then and then it will be S K T versus G two in final like like it's like the it's happened so many times in the past. And I, I mean, you know, as I, as a, as a guy who's been on G2 for so long, I, I would obviously love to see G2 leave the trophy. But at this point, it would be, it would be a very dumb man to doubt, uh, you know, Guma Yushi Keria, uh, owner of Aker, Zeus, like, so he's going to be T1 lifting the trophy. And that's basically, yeah, that, that's, that's a tournament. We don't have to watch it anymore, guys. You can just, like... <laughs> he just, no, we're supposed to be making this show promoting the tournament. He's just like, guys, you don't have to watch the games anymore. Sorry, I, I leaked it. I leaked, I leaked the script. I leaked the script. script. I, I, I would just great love, promotional content. I would love for this show to just turn into kind of like a storybook reading of perks. And he's just like, okay. And then in game one, this is how T1 wins. And then in game two, this is how T1 also wins. Just accompanied by all these colorful pictures. And of course, big scary baron voices but yeah I, I think it would be difficult to argue with you that that's not the highest likelihood or the high the, the you know chances of what's going to happen for the rest of the event but who knows we still have so much more msi to be watching and so many potential upsets could happen um but now that we're done with our hot picks it's now time for me to pick all of your lovely brains for us to take notes because as we were going into this next stage i need to ask you guys what you think are the biggest things that you know we should kind of take note of see what i did there take notes it's a sponsor segment let's go uh as we're going into this next stage sponsor plugs let's go segments uh so basically you know who or what should we be keeping our eyes on clearly we have t1 rng and g2 undefeated right now who's going to be the team that could potentially take that game off of them or you know in what fashion would that happen um perks we can start with you what do you think what's what should we be taking note of honestly i i'm just really hyped for like uh g2 versus skt t1 so oh, hell yeah. wow oh, yeah. wow i'm living in the past <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, also due towards RNG because it's kind of interesting facts like Cups is like, I mean I'm not gonna say he's the only one but he's probably one of the very few players that actually has positive in record against Faker on international stage right, and but he's like so he's like I don't know what was it eight and three against Faker but he's like one and eight against Jahu, so it's like so it's interesting to see if he can like keep the distance mm-hmm. uh, or close the distance you know on this uh, on these win rates uh basically so i think it's an interesting like he's actually had history with those players before right so it's it's actually funny how he faces them every time he goes to an international event you know um so yeah it's 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 interesting thank Kedra, what about you um i don't know i'm gonna keep my eyes on some champion picks because like as much as teams didn't show too much at the start of the start of the tournament like rng is playing a lot of different champs like gwen mid and things like this g2 did the same scion bot lane um i mean they're just trolling a lot <laughs> yeah, they're playing like Viking Red. I think what they're doing here is they don't really want to show much, but then the irony of not showing much is I presume these three teams are probably scrimming each other the most um, because it's the best practice. Uh, a couple I mean, of champs. If you, if you mind, 
like if you give me mind though, just sort of interrupt, it's like they do have other teams to scream as well, right? So it's like mm. I wouldn't even be sure if they're screaming. Like I know like a lot of the top LPL and LCK teams are streaming streaming at the moment as well. So it's like interesting to see if like there's gonna be a meta, a scream meta that that comes in one screen bubble and then faces another yeah. screen bubble. Because I, I, oh, I actually, yeah. I mean, I actually don't have the information, but I would doubt that like T1 is now screaming G2 on a regular basis. Like, I don't think they're doing that. Uh, yeah. I, again, I have zero information, like actually zero, like just so people know, I'm not like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not leaking no, something here or something, <laughs> but I, I, this is my assumption because I do know that the other teams are screaming, right? Mm -hmm. mm. The, the thing I was going to just mention about picks was, uh, for example, the two kind of high prior junglers I saw was Wukong and, and Graves, which are like obviously AD jungles. And what tends to count to those champs are AP jungles, like a good Nidalee player would do really well into those two champs. Pike blind pick could be punished by like range support. So I feel like this Graves Pike early rotation, yeah, I'm not so sold on it. Maybe it could be punished by like a good bot lane, like Gumi Yushikari playing like a Caitlyn Karma lane. I'm not sure how that would go. Uh, because that's what they played a lot uh, in the LCK. And Estriel Blind Pick has never really done super well at international events, if I cast my mind back. Um, if you're against a good Kai'Sa or something like this player or a Jin, uh, it seemed to struggle, uh, unless it was like the Iceborne meta where you were pretty fine. Uh, but like what teams are obviously doing is like they're picking like Estriel Rakan to have a good team fight when they first pick Wukong. But I'm a bit scared that your bot lane could get punished. Like in the G2 EG game, they picked Tristana Leona into it. Um, and Danny made a huge mistake level three and died. But they still had so much push, so much like potential to win the game through bot because they took away the second red buff and then they made another mistake by diving them under two towers so uh, i think estrial pike graves is what i'm going to keep my on for the tournament okay all right flowers to round it out what do you all right to so do? the stuff that i'm looking at instead of looking at things directly in the game like cajal talking about the picks or the builds or the counters i'm looking at specifically how it's going to shake out with the standings themselves because since the top three are so far and above the bottom three of the remaining six, it's like two entirely different yeah. archetypes here, right? There's a big difference between finishing first and finishing second. Because second and third have to play each other in that first best of five. If you finish first, you get to play against the PSG, Buffalo, or EG, whichever one qualifies. And by most people's assumptions and understandings that should be your ticket to finals right you get first you should be going to finals unless just one of those three teams has an immaculate showing compared to what they showed in groups right like mr buffalo yes only lost to t1 in groups but they also had a couple of shaky games psg got 13 and zeroed by red cannons right eg yes they managed to be order every single time but they lost to g2 every single time even mm -hmm. in games where they did have good reasons and good ways to win so I think the difference between first and second is going to be huge. Obviously, T1's like a big favorite to take first and be the one who gets to enjoy that sort of a freebie in the semifinal stage. But also for all four of those teams, or not all four, excuse me, all three of those teams that are competing for that fourth spot, I think it's really big to make sure that they don't fall into the mindset of treating a game like a trap game. If they're just, or uh, not respecting a game enough and having it become a trap game, excuse mm -hmm. me. If they go into these games thinking, oh, well, we got RNG tomorrow or we got RNG later today. We, we don't have to prepare for Buffalo. We don't have to prepare for PSG. And then you lose the Buffalo or PSG. I have seen enough nightmare tiebreaker situations for NA at international events to know that it's day four before you're looking back at day one and going, fuck, if only we could have won that one game that we should have won. So I'm really paying attention to like specifically how like the head to heads between the bottom three and then if that competition for first place is close or if it's just t1 running away with it yeah all of these very good things for us to take note of and look out for as we're watching the next stage of msi but that is all the time that we have here today uh thank you all for joining us again on this episode of the clinic i'm Avali perks cadrell flowers thank you all three for joining me as well and actually before we go flowers go like this really quick go like this what? Just go, go like this really quick. Like raise your raise your hand like this. Like like this. Okay, great. Uh editors, can we please Photoshop oh, wow. flowers into looking like Draven? Because he's he's kind of got it with the facial hair right now. Uh but for everyone else, thank you all so so much for watching this episode. And remember to tune into day one of the Rumble Stage of the 2022 Midseason Invitational on Friday, May 20th. And we will see you all there. Bye. No, say Draven. See Bye. Say Draven. Welcome to the League of Draven. Wait, oh my <laughs> god. Are, are, are you the voice? Are you the voice? <laughs> what the hell? Wait. <laughs>